Hey guys, so if you're like me and you have a huge appreciation for reading, but you don't always have the pocketbook to afford every single book you want to read, let's see if I can help you out. Now, before I get into the nitty gritty of this, there's one thing that is going to be completely obvious to most of you, but this is the internet. And if I don't say it, somebody's going to bring it up. Your local library. Obviously, if you've got a local library, that's where we're going to start. Depending on the size of the library, you've got a huge selection of books. Obviously, there's a few downfalls here and there. The book has to be in. You've got to read it within a certain amount of time. You've got to give it back. You know, things like that. But what if you can't get to your local library? Well, that's where something like Libby comes in. I have not personally used Libby. So I've just never had to. But I do know that there are people out there who do love it because they don't have to go to the library. And when they're done, the book just, you know, disappears off of their, off of their app. They don't have to go back and return it, et cetera, and so forth. But like I said, what if you are a slow reader? What if you, don't, you can't get that book done in the two weeks? What if you want to get a book that, to read later or to take with you somewhere? Now we're going to have to look at some other options. Let's start with ebooks. Ebooks are going to be across the board your cheapest options. I know this makes sense, but basically ebooks, regular books, and then audiobooks most of the time. And that's just because A, ebooks are the cheapest to make. Once the writer's gotten them done, they're ready to go. And they can sell as many of them as they want. It's just a digital format. They send you the they send you the file. Now, you would think audiobooks would have the same thing going for them because of the fact that, again, it's just, an, it's a, just a file. However, audiobooks, not only is the author trying to make a little bit of money, not to mention publishers, agents, etc., and so forth, but now you've also got to pay the uh, audio talent as well, the voice actor. So a lot of times, places are willing to get rid of physical books at a discount just to get them off their shelves as to where an audiobook there's there's no real need for that because they just sell an audiobook whenever they sell an audiobook but there are a couple options there and I'll get to those in a minute so let's start with the ebooks and my favorite my go to bookbub all right now bookbub bookbub is my absolute favorite you can set this up if you've got a nook if you've got a kindle these are all, all ebooks of course uh, actually, they have actually started sending me suggestions for Chirp.com, which we'll get into later too, but, uh, which is audiobooks. But those are, those are a lot fewer. Um, main thing here, I get multiples of these a week. Some of these are just based on the type of books that I like to read, fantasy, sci-fi, horror, with a little bit else thrown in. Uh, but also, I'll get one sometimes if there's like an author that you can follow authors as well as genres. And if one of those authors pops up, then I'll actually get one. Sometimes it'll be just a single book. You can see right here, this one here, buck 99, limited time only, 99 cents for an entire 12 series box. Now, again, this is ebook, it's not a real box, but 12 books for 99 cents. None in this one today, but I also get a lot of free ones. So minimal, minimal payout on this. All you got to do is, let's say I was going to pick this up. I click on it. It defaults to Amazon because it's already knows in my preferences that I've got a Kindle. And then that pops me up right here. All I got to do is buy now with one click. <laughs> I've got a credit. So this would actually be, this would be free with me, but only because I've already got a credit already. So, uh, but yeah, Ken Liu, Charlie Jane Anders, Elizabeth Bear. I mean, these are some of my favorite auth authors in the first place. And, you know, it's a whole, uh, a whole starter collection there in fact you know what i'm, I'm just gonna get it i wasn't planning on getting it but now that i see who's in it boom there we go and uh now it's uh sent directly to my kindle <laughs> i've earned kindle points i didn't actually well i spent i guess a buck 99 so i got a little bit there but yeah book uh like i said bookbub is my top one i get the most offers from this one there's almost always that that email is a one-off. There's almost always a freebie in there somewhere, 
sometimes two or three of them. Probably most of my ebook collection is all BookBub reg- recommendations. Now, this was not BookBub giving me this for free. This would, or you know, for a buck ninety nine. This was on sale on Amazon for a buck ninety nine. But what BookBub does is it gets all of those offers and it puts them together. Before I had it spe- specified to my Kindle, uh, you know, I'd get one sometimes, or you know, Barnes and Noble would have a nook book or something like that for you know sale free as well and you can set that up because of the fact now you got to remember on these your your kindle you do have the kindle for web or kindle there's also an app for your computer so if you don't have if you have a nook you could actually set it up for both that's what i used to do i have i had a nook and so i would have the nook books sent directly to my nook and then if there was a kindle book that was also on sale or free uh, then I would just have it sent to my computer and I could, I could read it there. So you don't have to limit yourself. I just know that I do all my reading on the Kindle now. All right. So that is it for BookBub. Uh, this is going to be your best place uh, to get free books without any any requirements on your end. All, all you got to do is go to BookBub.com and set up all of your details I make that sound like you've got to put in a lot of personal information, but you know, you if you if you don't like romance, you're gonna you're gonna want to make sure that you don't have that romance option picked, for instance. And that, that's all I mean. So all you got to do is you just swing by BookBub, put in your email, your name, pick which genres you like. If you want to specify, for instance, that you want Nook books or Kindle books or whatever, put that in there. And then, uh, like I said, you're going to get probably three or four of these a week, uh, especially if you start following authors. If you don't follow any authors and you're just looking at the genres, you probably still get a couple of these a week. And like I said, that one was a one-off. There was no freebies on there. There's there's almost always freebies. So, yeah, good good way to stock up on books without having to uh, break the bank. I'm sure Nook does the same thing. So if you've got a Kindle, for instance, I get emails directly from Amazon that have a list of books that might be of interest to me. And occasionally you know, you'll even get ones that they're saying, hey, come pick it up for free, which is always a nice little little bonus. Try out somebody you haven't tried out before. You can actually see I got a couple of them in here. I got a 99 cent one over there. Uh, right now I'm currently reading... Wilding Hall by Elizabeth Hand, so of course it's suggesting another one to me as well. So, like I said, you just by having a Kindle or a Nook, you are automatically going to be getting emails with suggested books. Some of them you can get for absolutely nothing. And then Bookspry is also another good one to sign up with. Uh, this says SciSpry here in the corner, but that's just because this is the section of Bookspry, just like anything else. Uh, I'd minimally read fantasy and science fiction, so I get a lot of stuff from SciSpry. What they'll do is they'll go ahead and send you a link, uh, a lot of stuff that are on sale in multiple places. See a couple of 99 cent ones in here. Here's a freebie. So just for giggles, let me click on that. So then, of course, I come over here. I've got SciSpry. This book, you can tell, is free. Uh, some of them will have multiple places you can click on. I think this one, because I've clicked on it before, I think is defaulting to Amazon. So yeah, I click on that. Automatically takes me to Amazon. Find out with one click for free. This is just an example. Uh, I probably wouldn't normally <laughs> read this one. But just wanted to let you know that these are free and you can pick them up. Just sign up for Bookspride. Another great way to find cheap books or even free books is to just plain follow the author. It makes perfect sense, but I don't think everybody thinks about it. Uh, for instance, I've got an email here from C. Gockle, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I've never actually heard her name out loud. Uh, but they like to let you know when your third their books are on sale. we got a series on sale right here. Um, actually, this... <laughs> Kind of funny, it's from C. Gockle, but uh, it's actually the box set is for Derek Smith, so some of them like to talk about each other, but they'll also let you know when theirs is. Uh, and this one, it's kind of funny, again, this is an author, but she is actually promoting some of the other people's books. C. Robert Cargill, Day Zero. 
I still need to read this. I absolutely love the Sea of Rust, but I have not gotten around to reading the prequel yet. Um, but yeah, a lot of them, they also get together, for instance. And I can't remember who I first got on that got me on this list, but all of these authors kind of promote each other's stuff. So free sci-fi and fantasy books. Click on that. That's going to take us over here. And then a lot of these books are going to be absolutely free. There, there she is, see Goggle. Uh, got a whole list here. And so just for giggles, huh, reminded me of a, a di different book there. No So White, probably not going to get this, but takes you to this page. Get your free copy of Snow So White. Let's get my book. Put a name, put an email address in there, and uh, they're going to go ahead and probably shoot you a, a digital version of this. Looks like it's going through Book Funnel, uh, which I talked about previously. So there you go. Um, if you've been wanting to check out a author or just want to check out a book by any author, uh, find a few authors that are in the same genre that you like to read. Follow those. I get newsletters all the time. And like I said, if they've got a book that's on sale, they're going to let you know about it. Uh, a lot of times it's going to be book one in a series that they've got book two coming out for, etc. and so forth. But it is a nice, cheap way to try out an author and see if you, see if you love them. And while we're at it, let's not forget Story Origins. Uh, so storyoriginapp.com, they also send me emails. And basically, I think I got uh, hooked up with them from an author that I was following, if I remember correctly. And if you click on that link, it'll actually take you to that particular uh, link. That is, so the one that I they'd sent me there was for the science fiction stuff. So obviously, you can see that here, space opera giveaway. Um, but you can also go to the main website again. That's just storyoriginapp.com. This is another one that is set up by authors, but as you can see, I have an account here. I don't remember if I set this account. Yeah, I did must have set up the account. See, there is one for readers and one for authors. However, I haven't gone and searched anything before. I've just always taken what they've given me. But now that I'm actually on here trying to do this video, I realize that if you go to the main one and not just the link they send you, you can actually go looking for ebooks and audiobooks. And again, usually these are either ARCs or books that are the first in the series that somebody's trying to get you to read their book. So again, I have done a bunch of these for ebooks. I oh yeah, as you saw it, it actually said review copies up there briefly. Sorry, I just noticed that. But uh yeah, so apparently uh you can do audiobooks as well. Not sure I'm gonna be reading Heart of a Monster the complete series, but I could be wrong. Uh I see a lot, I do get a lot of romance stuff in here, even though I don't, <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's, uh, let's not go there, shall we? Uh, but they also do get a lot of uh, fantasy and sci-fi, well, especially sci-fi. I get a lot of offers for sci-fi books. Um, but yeah, another one, like I said, these are all free audiobooks, free eBooks. that again, basically the idea is that you're getting these with the knowledge that you are supposedly going to give them a review somewhere. This one, storyorigin.com, I don't think you turn in the reviews to them, unlike NetGalley. Again, this one, probably because this one's author-based, the authors are pushing them, and so they're just not going to follow up on that. Again, if you're going through Story Origin or if you go through NetGalley, the idea is that hopefully you are still going to leave a review somewhere. The authors or the publishers, in the case of NetGalley, they are putting these out here to try to drum up interest for their books. Obviously, NetGalley is not going to let you gain the system because, game, yeah, game the system. I can speak English uh, because, obviously, the publishers are following up on that, and they're going to be making sure you're doing the reviews. Story Origin, this is the authors offering you their books. If an author is going to give you a book for free, at least if you're going to accept one of these, at least try to read it and then go ahead and give a review for it. Obviously, you don't have to grab one if you know you're not going to read it, but that is the purpose of this is to get their name out there and to hopefully drum up some interest. So you are not required to give a five-star review on any of these. You don't even aren't required to give a good review. Although, like I said, if I do have a book that's lower and I wouldn't normally give it uh, as many stars as the person might hope, I either don't review it, to be honest with you, or I uh, 
point out the things that I did like about it. I think to a certain extent, you can take a look at a book and see how many reviews it's gotten and uh, kind of judge by there about uh, how many people probably aren't one star reviewing. That's the nice thing I will say about the book community. Not everybody, but if you go to like Yelp or someplace like, or TripAdvisor, you see a lot of people that hop on these websites just to complain. I find that books are almost the other way around. There are some people that will not give a review unless it's five stars. Uh, so, yeah, uh, book people tend, tend to be a little nicer than everybody else. Not all of them, but, but in general, I have to give a shout out to the book community. So, well, like I said, Story Origins, another one. This one you can sign up for, and I don't think anybody's following up on you. But if I read a book from Story Origin, I will be doing a review of it somewhere. All right, so now let's take a look at one that actually is going to require a little bit of effort on your end. These are still going to be free, but these are ARCs. The main one that I go through is NetGalley. After BookBub, it's probably the biggest collection of books that I have that I need to read still. Well, other than ones I bought, let's face it. So swinging down here, here's an offer from NetGalley right now. You got a new book out here. You click on Read Now. That is going to take us over to the NetGalley page. And so as you can see right here, I do have the option for read now. So I'm just going to go through this one. I probably wouldn't normally pick this up, but just so that you guys see what it looks like. Click on read now. What appeals to you about it? Uh, Joe Hark, I have heard of the author before. So go ahead and click on that. Um, cover, I'll be honest, cover does nothing for me. I uh, do like the book title, though. It's a sweeping historical novel in the vein of Hilary Mantle and Maggie O'Farrell set during the Tudor's Ascent. Kind of like the description. This is my first time hearing about the book, so that's not going to be an option. But I click on Read Now. It's thinking. So apparently this one doesn't require any sort of approval on the back end. Occasionally you will get ones that do require that the publisher approve you. This one does not. So I can go ahead and just click send it straight to my Kindle. My Kindle's already been set up in here. So boom, I got stuff. No problem. What I do want to show you, if I go to my dashboard, I can see all of the titles in certain categories and stuff like that. I could actually look for stuff. Snow Globe, this is one that I need to read. I need to give it a review, so it's it's, it's waiting for me. <laughs> uh, but you can also browse publishers if, you wanna, if you're looking for something like, for instance, let's say you want to grab Tor or something because you know uh, they do a lot of science fiction stuff and it's right up your alley. If you're looking for a specific title, you can do that. And, of course, it also gives you some suggestions. And then there's the Your Shelf page. So these here... Witchcraft, did I not? Maybe, so looks like I maybe I hadn't sent that one to myself, so I'll go ahead and give that one. Uh, I also need to get this one. Uh, I thought I already sent this one to myself too. I'm not 100% sure, but these are the ones I need to get started on reading. Ones I need to get feedback on. Yeah, I need to, I need to get my button gear. The thing to remember with NetGalley, and again, this is where I'm talking about the fact that you're going to have to do something you technically are supposed to be giving reviews for these. I am way, way behind. I have actually quit asking for too many of these. This one, like I said, was a was a gimme. But if the publisher, if it's one of the ones that the publisher want, has to approve you for and your numbers get pretty low, like, hey, you, you've taken a ton of, ton of these, but you haven't actually left any feedback, then, you know, they, they might start saying no. As you can see, I have had it like this one here. This one was actually a good one for me because of the fact that they gave me 48 hours to read it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I had uh, a very, very short amount of time to get that done. Uh, I already did the review. I sent some feedback. Uh, I haven't, I, indeed, social sharing. Yeah, I, that seems like a weird thing. I would probably not do that one. But I have a few of these under my belt. I do definitely need to uh, get some more done, though, and get those going. And like I said, you can see everything from your dashboard, including a lot of suggestions. Titles in my categories. I'm honestly not sure why some of these are showing up as in my categories. I don't think I picked romance. Some of these look... That looks a little romancy to me. 
uh, you know, probably because I do some YA stuff, and it did get the YA. Uh, this one's mystery, historical fiction. So yeah, so even though some of these are romance, they're also they're also tagging other categories that I do do read. You can see you can see you can set all your categories. You can add or change your categories. So this one is again, it's it's a really good option. Yeah, you're, you're mainly looking at arcs here. Downside is for some of you, uh, they kind of expect you to actually read those and get some information back to them. Understandably so, but it's not just a free book. It is a free book with the expectation that you will do something and that if you don't do something, uh, they, they might quit. They might quit sending you stuff. And I can't remember what all the different options are here. I think when I first signed up for NatGalley, I was working at a bookstore. Uh, and then later I changed it over to this because now I just do uh, reviews and author interviews. So I can't remember if that changes what your options are or not on certain things. But just putting it out there, this is a really, really good way to... Look at some books uh, before everybody else gets to. Downside, of course, is not every single arc is exactly what the finished product is going to look like, although it's usually pretty darn close. Uh, I do remember one I kind of had a little fun with. I didn't realize it, but I got an arc for my daughter, who also worked at a bookstore at the time. And it was, a pub, it was an author. I can't even remember who it was now, but she really, really wanted to read it. And the arc ended before the final book ended so you get towards the end of the arc and it's like to see the rest of what happens then you had to actually buy the book which I get I did not have any problem with it <laughs> but yeah she was she could not wait for that book to come out anyhow so NetGalley's uh, a big one there's another one while I'm talking to you about NetGalley there's another one and this one is I kind of call it NetGalley adjacent because book funnel you will get a lot of books. It's like, hey, you can download this from NetGalley or BookFunnel. BookFunnel, as you can tell, though, uh, there's no really login for us. Oh, hey, there's a real login for us. That is new. Um, did I did I do a reader login? Oh, I must have. So yeah. Downside is for the reader login, though, as you can see, I can see what's in. These are all books that I have downloaded from BookFunnel, but that's because they were offered to me via book funnel from the author. Uh, so like I said, there's a bunch of here that I need to read too, that I need to get to. Differ main difference between book funnel and NetGalley is again, you have a reader login, but that's just to access your library. I can't go look for books to download on book funnel. Um, that's just books that I have been sent an email from an author, usually not, not usually personally, usually it's as a newsletter or something like that, although I have gotten a couple ones directly from the author. But they give you a link to BookFunnel, and you can download it from there. Uh, some authors use both NetGalley and BookFunnel, but I found most authors, if it's a small independent author, they tend to use BookFunnel. If the publisher is putting the book out, they tend to use NetGalley. Um, and again, like I said, you cannot go search for books on BookFunnel, but you will see BookFunnel once you start getting into ARCs and new author newsletters and things like that. So just wanted to let you know about it. Didn't have to pay for any of these. Uh, when I do read them, though, I will be doing reviews for them because, again, they're sending you free books. Uh, some of these are ARCs. Some of these are a lot of book ones when book two's coming out or maybe even further down the line trying to like, you know, hey, got a new book out. Here, go read the first book for free. If you like the series, you know you didn't have. If you don't like the series, you don't have to pay anything for it. If you do like the series, come come buy book two. I get it. it. It's not a bad not a bad business model. So that is probably pretty much it for most of the stuff. Obviously, not an all inclusive list, but that's most of the regular physical or ebook. Excuse me, that's most of the ebooks that I'm familiar with, or at least the ones that I use. One more thing to get to, and then we're going to wrap it up. All right, so this is going to be the last one I'm going to talk about. This is because this one does not do regular books or ebooks. This one is audiobook only. It's called chirpbooks.com. 
Chirpbooks.com is great for finding really, really cheap audiobooks because we all know audiobooks are not usually cheap. They are at least they are usually at least the same price as the paperback, and in some cases even more expensive. But here's the one that I know was a bestseller not too long ago. I say not too long ago. I'm terrible with time. It was probably a decade ago. But Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. I remember when that one was really, really big. Normally $22.95. I can pick it up on Chirp Books for a buck ninety-nine. Don't have an email to show you right now, but they do send me audiobook email uh, from time to time. Once you sign up for an account here, you will get these deals in your email. And I also do occasionally get uh, uh, Chirp Books suggested to me on my BookBub email list as well. But obviously there's going to be a lot of books in here that are from, you know, smaller authors. But I mean, and of course, in classic C.S. Lewis, Charles Dickens, a lot of these ones where there's not really any sort of copyright uh, left on them and pretty much anybody can do them. But let's face it, some of these authors, you've heard some of these authors before. Zane Gray, Dashiell Hammett, come on now. We all know who these people are. It's not all one-offs. H.G. Wells. Uh, anybody else? Oh, Margaret Stoll. Oh, wait. Black Widow Forever Red. Never really sure about it. I know they do comic book novels now, but I'm never sure about those audiobooks. David Weber, John Ringo, those, you know. There's some really, really good books in here for really, really cheap prices. So if you do like audiobooks and you don't want to spend, you know, 20, 30 bucks on them, chirpbooks.com, check it out. I don't have any sort of affiliate link with them. Uh, I, in fact, I do most of my audiobooks through Libro FM, which I do have affiliate links for. But uh, yeah, I'm not going to uh, share those because that's not what this, uh, it's not what this particular video is about. This is about you being able to find books and not break the bank and still try to keep up with your reading. So chirpbooks.com is great for the average uh, book reader who likes audiobooks and is just looking for some cheap audiobooks. They've got plenty of options and again you, this is another one where you can tell them which type of books you like etc and so forth. Um, so like if I click on deals for you then again, it's picking either authors or genres that I have particularly picked in the in the past. Uh, Anthony Horowitz, R.F. Quang. I still need to read Babel. Six ninety nine. Looks at not all of them are going to be two bucks, but still, it's a whole lot cheaper than thirty six ninety nine. <laughs> uh, the other thing to note about Chirp Books is, is if you see something that you really really like, Horror Store, for instance. Here, I don't know if I pronounce that. Sorry, Grady. Uh, is just a buck ninety nine. Some of these other ones, like the Babel one, if you see something at a price you're willing to pay on sale, and it's got one of these, pay close attention. The sales do go away. They really, really do. I have missed a few books uh, just because I didn't have any money on me at the time. But wanted to let you know about that. And of course, you can always just plain up browse, see what the different options are. You can go in here and check out a specific section even though they wouldn't normally be sending you this stuff. What did I put in my cart? Oh, huh. Let Me Go by Kate Bold. Apparently I put this one in my cart and uh, never actually checked it out. So, hey, looky there. Free. Place order. Boom. Okay. <laughs> well, that was, that was fun. Glad I looked in there. I was like, what the heck's in my cart? All right, so that finishes up for audiobooks. That finishes up for chirpbooks.com. The one thing, and I'll go ahead and take you over here to Libro.fm. This one is not going to be for everybody. Uh, obviously, if you're a regular reader and you're just looking for some books, chirpbooks is going to have sales. But if you're looking for a full price one, uh, Libro.fm is a lot like Audible. Libro.fm will occasionally have some sales on books. But they also have a, let me get logged in here. Do, 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 do. They also have a monthly membership, and I think it's about the same price as Audible. I think they're both like 15 bucks each. 
And the big thing for this is like if I buy a book or if I have a membership through Libra.fm, you can see here I'm supporting the bookworm. So any book that I buy here, for instance, let's say I wanted to grab Fragile Threads of Power, a piece of this sale is going to go to my local independent bookstore. It doesn't have to be my local independent bookstore. I mean, I could pick the Poison Pen out in Scottsdale if I wanted to. However, I did pick the bookworm. So if you want to support your local independent bookstore, and and of course, you, it's, it's very hard to pick up audiobooks these days at the bookstores because not a lot of people do books on CD anymore. Books on tape is a thing that just shows me how old I am. Uh, but yeah, a lot of, a lot of your books, audiobooks are going to be online. They're going to be coming through your phone. They're going to be coming through your computer. However, you've got it set up. Let's face it. Most of it's coming through our phone. And so this is a way for you to get audiobooks and still give a slice of that pie to the local bookstore and not just to Jeff Bezos. Sorry, Jeff, but I'd, I'd rather, I'd rather my money go to the mom and pop shops, but yeah, Libra.fm. Awesome. If if you happen to be a book seller, and by that I mean you work at a bookstore, or in my case, uh, I do, like I said, reviews and things like that, you can get a membership with them that will actually allow you to get uh, advanced listening copies. This is not out for everybody, so you will have to, like, you know, tell them who you are. I think I had to show the fact that I've got the YouTube channel, etc., and so forth. But if you do that, then you can also see, I already did August, September's around the bore, uh, around the bend here. I can't wait for that to come up. But you can actually get advanced listening copies. Uh, let's see here. I think it, most of these I already grabbed for the, or the ones that I'm going to read, I've already grabbed. But let's look at this one here. Men have called her crazy a memoir. I'm pretty sure I didn't grab that one. Uh, obviously anything you can add to your wish list so that you can keep a wish list on here to see what you want. However, this audiobook when it comes out is going to be 2624. As an advanced listening copy user, I, I don't think I actually got this one. I'm just going through this to show you how it works. I can get this one for free because the book hasn't come out yet. Now I do say that in this case, and a lot of these, again, these are advanced listening copies, but let's face it. Advanced listening copies, unlike advanced reader copies, they're, they're not going to reread that entire thing. An advanced listening copy is going to be the final version of the book, so you don't have to worry about that. But I've also had a few times where, even though it's listed as an advanced listening copy, the book itself may have come out a year ago, but now the audiobook's out. So you're not, not every single one of these is going to be brand new. And obviously you do have a limited uh, supply to, to check through. And it rotates every single month. Um, and every once in a while I'll get one where it'll be listed on here. But when I go to grab it, I'm like, oh, that looks actually familiar. Let me grab that one. And I actually pre-ordered it again as an advanced listening copy three months ago. <laughs> so it's just on the list again. Don't worry, uh, it'll tell you that you've already got it. It will not, for instance, let's, so we did this one. If I went back, come on, come on. And let's do a refresh, see if it makes a difference. Uh, yeah, see, so it's free for this. It says, it'll tell you that you've already purchased it. In this case, obviously just one minute ago and I could download it or listen on the app. Obviously, I've got the Libra.fm app on my phone. I tend to listen to audiobooks as I fall asleep or on you know, long trips and stuff like that. But uh, this one is going to be the hardest. This one is not for everybody. Again, obviously, no problems whatsoever if you want to join a membership for uh, Libra.fm instead of Audible. The prices are pretty much the exact same for both of them. Again, what you're doing when you go to leader.fm though is that you just you're supporting an independent bookstore but uh, if you can jump through some hoops if you can show that you are a for instance in my case a book reviewer an author interviewer then you can also look at getting in on their uh, monthly advanced listening copy list so that is pretty much it 
and I think I'm starting to lose my voice. So let's wrap it up. All right, boys and girls. So that is the entire list. My entire list. Obviously, I know that there's other stuff out there that I have not hit on just because I'm not familiar with it or haven't used it. Uh, I know some libraries, I can't think of it off the top of my head, but I know there is another app other than Libby that also allows you to rent uh, library books and stuff like that. And I'm sure there's probably a few other things that are kind of like BookBub that uh, I haven't caught on. I know that I'm on at least one list called uh, Patty's eBuckaroo or something like that. I uh, don't remember how I got on that one, and I just didn't have an email for it. But the more of these you hit, the, you'll start you'll start tripping over some other ones as well. Obviously, if you want to buy a book, buy the book, support the authors. Every a lot of the arcs that I've gotten, for instance, hold that thought. You know, I had a copy of the arc for The Sky on Fire because of the fact that I was interviewing Jen Lyons. However, I love the book, so yeah, I went out and I bought an actual copy of the book. Uh, I, in fact, I even contacted the local bookseller by her so that I could get a, ah, wrong spot. I could get a signed copy personalized to me. Appreciate that, Jen. But like I said, I do not use the, I do not use any of these sources to avoid buying books from authors. I still buy a lot of books. Uh, speaking of uh, buying a book just for the cover, Michael, I will get to that at some point. This book was an ebook for the longest time. I actually, one of the few times I've gone through a Kickstarter, I had to get the physical book because I love that cover. I haven't even read the book yet. I don't even know if I'm going to like it, but I had to have it. So, you know, I, I do buy a lot of books still, uh, although the wife does have me on a little bit of a leash. We just moved into a new place and we just don't have a lot of the area storage area that we used to have. And uh, yeah, moving when you've got, you know, 10, 11, 12, however many boxes of it was of TBR gets a little heavy. Uh, so I do have a lot of ebooks now. I do have a lot of audiobooks, but uh, I know everybody can't afford as many books as maybe they want, and I do use a lot of these arcs, elks. There's not, there's not really a good short form for advanced listening copy, <laughs> um, or you know some of these other free free book ones and stuff like that to see if I like an author, and if I do, I'm absolutely a gonna review it so that uh, you guys can also hopefully find them and love them too. And B, I'm probably going to actually buy, you know, book two or book three or book four uh, in that series as I keep going along. But hopefully this helps some of you out. Hopefully you can find some ways to get some more books in your library, whether that be the library on your phone or the library on the shelf behind you. Yes, I know this looks really, really sad right now, but I just got this thing built a couple days ago. I don't have everything up here yet. It'll, it'll get filled. Um, seriously, hope you enjoyed this. If you liked it, you know, feel free to check out some of the other stuff I've got on the channel. I'm not one of those, you know, like and subscribe guys. If you like it, great. If you subscribe, that's great. More so, I just hope that you find something that you enjoyed and that you can find something else that's also going to educate you I do a lot of stuff. Uh, author interviews is still my bread and butter. Um, the book reviews maybe as a total are starting to catch up to the author interviews. But I started this channel wanting to interview authors. I do a lot of sci-fi. I do a lot of fantasy. I do a lot of... Uh, I've started to do a little bit more mystery. It's definitely picking up some more horror. If you guys got somebody that you want me to uh, interview... Throw it down in the channel. I'll see if I can get them on. But that's what I'm here for. Also, this is a community. Help each other out. If you guys know of a good place to find cheap or even free books for the people who can't afford, you know, the million dollar library, put those down in the comments. I know I didn't hit everything, and there's probably some that I haven't even heard of before. But thank you for your time. Check out one of these videos that's going to pop up. See if it's something you like, and I will catch you later.